I know you've watched a bunch of videos on YouTube about Goodzilla, some saying that it's the perfect engine for everybody and others that there are a lot of disadvantages. This video will show you the different opinions of the discussions talking about some pros and some cons about this engine. As a result, the aim of this video is to show you both sides of the discussion about this whole topic so that at the end you can come to your own conclusion. I'll sum up all the videos out there on YouTube talking about Good Jode in just one video. So if you really want to find out if Good Jode is good for you, stick to me until the end. And now, let's start. Well, let's start with one of the most controversial discussions around Good Jode, it's physics. In this video I talked widely about this, so I really encourage you to watch it. Before that, let me clarify that Goodzode physics capabilities are indeed powerful and versatile. However, some discussions often point out that the default physics settings in Goodzode may not work as, ex as expected for game development. Users have expressed frustration with this default behavior, but here's the thing, this perception depends on your game's specific requirements and desired level of realism. Goodjode provides various parameters and settings to fine-tune the physics behavior. By customizing these settings, you can achieve more accurate physics simulations tailored to your game mechanics. But well, of course, this will, take, this will take you time and even though you may spend a lot of time on that, the result may not be as perfect as you want. As a result, the time that you initially saved at the beginning by quickly creating a project, then you waste it with the physics. Yes, the workflow in this engine is super fast and easy, but does it really matter if when, we, when you use physics you must spend a lot of time in them? In my opinion, the default physics behavior in Goodjot may not be suitable for most projects. This is because in many physics-based games, the default settings can cause objects to behave in unexpected or unrealistic ways. Although Goodjot allows flexibility in adjusting physics settings, it's essential to fine-tune them to ensure a more realistic and satisfying physics simulation for a specific game. Again, watch the video that I've made a couple of weeks ago in which I talked a lot about physics in good jail so that you can have a better understanding of my point, the link is in the first line of the description. Goodjode stands out as an outstanding game development engine primarily due to its remarkable ease of use. This essential feature makes it an excellent choice for developers of all skill level, including beginners and experienced professionals, as it streamlines the game development process and empowers creators to bring their ideas to life effortlessly. The user-friendly interface of Goodjot makes navigation and learning the engine a breeze. The intuitive layout and well-organized menus enable developers to quickly grab the various tools and features even if they are new to game development. This accessibility reduces the learning curve, allowing beginners to dive into the world of game creation with confidence and enthusiasm. Moreover, without extensive documentation and a supportive community play a significant role in enhancing its ease of use. The documentation is comprehensive and easy to follow, providing clear explanations and examples for each aspect of the engine. Likewise, the active community of developers, re readily available forums and tutorials ensure that users can seek help, guidance and share the knowledge to solve any challenges they encounter during their development journey. Also, the engine's scripting language, GDScript and C-Sharp further contribute to its ease of use. GDScript is a simple and beginner-friendly language designed specifically for Goodjot, allowing developers to write code more efficiently and effectively. For those who prefer C Sharp, Goodjot offers seamless integration, making it accessible to developers who are already familiar with this popular language. Also, if you learn GDScript, at the same time you, you could say that you're learning Python, why? Because Python is based, I mean, GDScript is based in Python. So there is a lot of similarities when it comes to syntax. So it's a win-win situation. You shouldn't use Goodjot if you're planning to work in an established company. Finding an actual job in one of these is barely impossible. But why there are no Goodjot-related jobs? 
Well, Gujode is an incredible open source game engine that has garnered a dedicated following within the indie and hobbies game development communities. Its user-friendly interface, possibility to run in any PC, and extensive documentation have made it an excellent choice for those starting out in game development. However, despite its strengths, one challenge that Gujode faces is the lack of formal job opportunities in established game development companies. The primary reason for this discrepancy lies in the familiarity and industry-wide adoption of Unity and Unreal Engine. Many established game companies have been using this engine for years, and their developers are already well-versed in their workflows. As a result, these companies tend to look for candidates with specific expertise in these engines when hiring new talent. This preference for Unity or Unreal experienced developers has led to a limited number of job openings for those proficient in Gujode. In addition to this, another important factor that plays a vital role in the issue of a limited number of job opportunities for Gujode developers is the release date of the engine. Gujode was officially released as an open source engine in 2014, which is significantly later than its major competitors which were already established and well adopted by the game development industry by that time. The early adoption of Unity and Unreal allowed these engines to build a massive user base and establish themselves as industry standards. Game development companies had already invested time and resources into training their developers on these engines, creating a strong network of professionals proficient in using them. As a result, there was a natural inertia for these companies to continue using the engines they were already familiar with, leading to a preference for hiring developers with expertise in Unity or Unreal. Without, on the other hand, had to compete with this giant and face the challenge of convincing game development companies to switch or expand, or expand their toolset to include a, re a relatively new and an unfamiliar engine. Changing or adapting existing workflows can be costly and time-consuming for game studios, which further contributed to limited job opportunities for good job developers. One important aspect to consider when exploring the Udot engine is the lack of tutorials available compared to some other popular game development engines like Unity. While there are certain, certainly tutorials and learning resources available for Gujot, they may not be as abundant or comprehensive as those for more established engines. This lack of tutorials can present some challenges, especially for beginners who rely heavily on step-by-step -step guides and instructional videos to learn the basics of game development. Without a wide range of tutorials, some users may find it more difficult to grasp certain concepts or implement specific features in their games. However, it's essential to acknowledge that the Gujo community is continuously growing and actively contributing to the available learning resources. As the engine gains popularity and more developers adopt it, the availability and quality of tutorials are likely to improve over time. But in the meantime, aspiring Gujod users may need to be more resourceful and open to exploring alternative ways of learning. This could include participating in community forums, seeking help from experienced, for experienced users, joining online courses or reading the official documentation in depth. One of its greatest advantages lies in its low hardware requirement. This key feature makes it a fantastic choice for developers and aspiring game creators who may not have access to high-end machines or are working on older hardware. One of the primary reasons Gujot is admired for its low hardware requirements is its lightweight design. The engine is meticulously optimized to be efficient and fast, ensuring it runs smoothly on a wide range of devices, including other computers and laptops. Unlike some other game engines that demand powerful hardware to operate properly, Gujot can deliver an enjoyable experience without placing a heavy burden on the system's resources. This efficiency also extends to the games developed using Gujot. Thanks to its lightweight nature, the games created with this engine tend to have modest file sizes, making them easy to distribute and download. 
players can enjoy these games without worrying about storage constraints or lengthy downloads. Additionally, good jokes, low hardware requirements contribute to a more inclusive game development community. Aspiring developers who may not have access to high-end machines can still dive into the world of game development without feeling excluded. This accessibility fosters creativity and innovation, enabling a broader range of individuals to share their unique ideas with the gaming community. Moreover, low hardware requirements mean that developers can focus more on their creative process and less on optimizing their projects to run smoothly. This streamlines the development workflow and allows creators to concentrate on bringing their visions to life rather than constantly worrying about technical limitations. Finally, we can see the low hardware requirements in the Android device. Yes, in fact, you can run it in any Android device. The Goodjot Asset Store is a valuable resource for game development using the Goodjot engine. While it provides various assets to enhance game development, it still has some areas of improvement when compared to the Unity Asset Store, for example. One of the notable differences is the selection of assets. The Unity Asset Store offers a wider variety of options, making it easier for developers to find the specific assets they need for their projects. In contrast, the Goodjot Asset Store may have a more limited selection, making it challenging for some developers to find suitable assets. Another aspect to consider is the quality and consistency of assets. The Unity Asset Store generally maintains higher standards, ensuring a more professional and reliable experience for developers. While the Goodjot Asset Store has improved, some assets may still vary in quality and consistency. Support and updates are crucial for any asset store. Unity's asset store often receives regular updates and better support from the asset creators, ensuring that developers have access to the latest features and fixes. The Goodjot asset store may not always offer the same level of frequent updates and support. The size of the community surrounding an asset store is also essential. Unity's larger and more active community leads to more shared knowledge, discussions and resources benefiting developers. The good job community is growing, but it may not have the same depth as Unity's community yet. However, Goodjot remains as an excellent option for indie projects and hobbyist developers. Its user-friendly interface, ease of use and cost effectiveness make it an attractive engine for those looking to create games on a smaller scale or explore personal creative projects without the pressures of immediate employment in large studios. For aspiring game developers interested in learning their roles, honing their skills and gaining experience before potentially moving on to other engines used by VR companies, Goodjot can serve as an invaluable stepping stone. The experience gained from working with Goodjot can still be relevant and transferable to other engines, making it a valuable asset for personal growth and portfolio development. Moreover, the fact that you always have to pay $0, it doesn't matter how much your game makes, there are no licenses or things that you have to pay. Then, should you use Goodjot? Comment your opinion down below. In conclusion, this video has provided a balanced perspective on the Goodjot engine, discussing its strengths and limitations. We explore the powerful and versatile physics capabilities of Goodjot, but also acknowledge the need for fine-tuning to achieve the desired result. The engine's ease of use and accessibility make it an excellent choice for developers of all levels, especially with its, its user-friendly interface, extensive documentation and supportive community. In the end, whether Goodjot is the right engine for you depends on your specific needs and preferences as a game developer. Exploring the engine features, trying out the asset store offerings and seeking support from the community can help you make an informed decision. Embracing the strengths of Goodjot while being aware of its limitations can lead to successful and fulfilling game development experience. I hope this video was helpful and if so, please consider subscribing. See you in the next one and bye bye.